Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 25 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to go over the list component. And as you can see here, I've went ahead and done a couple things ahead of time that you know all about, so there's no point in going over it again. And to create a list component, you just type in JList, just like we've done before. And I'm going to show you two of them because there's technically two ways of doing lists. And I'm going to also create a default list model. And what this is going to allow you to do is create a list of items that then will be editable. The default way of using list does not allow you to change those different list items. So we're going to also use a default list model to be able to do that. And you're going to see here in a minute through example exactly how that works. And then finally, I'm also going to add a scroll pane or scroll bars to our list item. And there you go. And here's where I'm going to create our frame or make a call to our constructor inside of our class. Here's where I'm defining the size. Here's where I'm laying everything in the middle of the screen. Here is where I'm handling all of the closing events whenever this thing's closed. Here's the title for our frame. This is the creation of the panel that is going to go inside of the frame or the window. This is the creation of the button. This is adding the listener for the button. And again, adding the listener for the button. And this is how we we add the button to the panel. So skipped over a whole bunch of things because you already know about them. Now one way that we can add items to a list component is to again create an array of different strings. And here I'm just going to throw in a couple different movies as they come to mind. So let's just say matrix. Okay, so now I have my array of strings. Now to both create a list box and also add this array of strings, I just got to refer back to the name for this little list component and then go new and then go J list. See again and again and again, we're doing the same sort of things with these components. And then I'm also going to define a couple other different things things here. I'm going to say that I want to set the height for this guy. This is going to be every single part or every cell of my list. So let's just click on that, save ourselves some time. And then the height I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put 30. And then we're going to do pretty much the same sort of thing. We're going to define the cell width, set, fixed. And then here we're going to click on width. And in this situation, I'm going to put 150 inside of there. One of these lists is going to look really nice, and the other one's going to look not so nice. But either way, it's good to know how to set up all these different things. And then you have to set up your selection mode. And I'm going to go over all these different things. I'm going to use list selection model. And I'm going to come in here and type in single interval selection. And what single interval selection means is you want people to have the option to select as many of whatever they want in the list as long as they select them in order. And as we go through and I show you different examples here, this is the most confusing one, but it's basically saying if you have say item one and item two and item three, they can select one and two, but they could not select one and three at the same time. And there's different ways of doing these. You could also have multiple interval selection inside of there, and that would allow people to select whatever they want in whatever order. And then you have single selection, which means that they can only select one thing at a time. So Play around with that and you'll figure it out. There's a whole bunch of different methods that go along with this type of list, which I'm not, I'm going to go through here, but I'm not going to cover in totality because I find using this guy up here, the default list model, is a much better way of playing around with lists. And you see here all the different methods that are available for lists. You have get selected index, and what this does is return the index for the first selected item. And get selected indexes returns all of the indexes for every item. Then you have get selected value just returns the first selected item get selected values it selects and throws everything into an array and gives you all the selected items and then is selected index returns true if the index is selected so those are all the different things but like i said you're probably more than likely going to use my default list model and again to create that we're going to use both but i didn't want to go into detail in something that you're probably not ever going to use but it's also very good to understand that it does exist if somebody decides to use old broken sort of list tools and you come across that. So here I'm going to create favorite colors and pink. So I just created another array of string items. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to load them into the default list model. And then I'm going to load it into the list component. And one way that you can load these in is to come in here and type in color. You've seen this guy before. It allows you to easily manipulate your way through different arrays. And if I want to load all these items in here individually, just type in def list model dot 
add element. See, there's no way that you could do this with the other type of list item. And I'm just going to type in color in this situation. Okay, so that's going to load all of those different items into that little container called the default list model. And I'll go through all of the methods that are available with this guy because it's very useful. So let's say that after you create this, you also want to define or add an additional item into the index 2. And let's say that this is purple is what you want to put in there. Just that simply, you can then load that inside of there. Then after you have all these different items added in here, you want to call favorite colors, which is the list component itself, and then go equals new J list and load in that little box that's going to contain all those different strings that you want shown up in the list component. Then we can come in here and say that we only want to show some of the items. So let's say you only want to show the first four items in the list. That's exactly how you would do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call our scroller, which is our scroll pane that's going to allow us to add scrolling functionality to this guy. And just go new, a scroll pane like we did in previous tutorials. And then here we're going to put favorite colors inside of here. And then we're also going to say that we want to use scroll bars as needed. And then we're also going to do this for horizontal and close that off. And there you got your little scroll pane. And then with favorite colors, we're also going to come in here and define the sizes for our cells. And we're going to contain all this information. Again, it's set, fixed, cell height. And then we're also going to put 30 inside of there. Of course, you can put it wherever you want. Set, fixed. And then we'll come in here and put the width in as well. And then to the panel, I'm going to add favorite movies. Don't want to forget to do that. And then also we want to add the scroller. Remember, if you're going to use a scroll panel, you do not add the list in the same way. You instead put the list item, which is this favorite colors inside of the scroller. And then you add the scroller to the panel. Something that's a little bit confusing. And then we're going to say this, add. We want to add the panel to the frame. And then as you see here, I already got this in here. This is where we're going to add the panel to the frame or the window. And here is where we're going to say that we want the window or the frame to be shown as visible. So that's all we're going to need to do down here. And just so you can see exactly what we've been working on, I'm going to execute this guy and you'll be able to see the different types of lists that are available to you. And here you are. Here's the basic list. And if you can't see this, view it full screen. It's all HD. You'll be able to see it in the different ways you could select different items. As you can see here, I'm trying to select both the matrix and big, and it's not allowing me to do it. That's what I was referring back to. Whenever I said single interval selection, it will not allow me to select items unless they are in a row. Like you can see, I can do there. And then here is our little scroll bar that allows us to scroll through all the different items, and it only shows four at a time. Now what we're going to do is come in here and shoot some stuff out on the screen based off of if they hit the button or not. And what we're going to do is we're going to be playing around with the default list model, because we can't do this type of editing using the other list that we were talking about before. And one thing we can do is we can make a check to see if an item exists in the list. So let's say that we want to check if black is in the list or not. And if it is, we're going to call info on component, which is our string that's going to hold a lot of information in regards to what we want to print out whenever we create our J option pane. And I'm just going to say black is here, pretty simplistic, and then throw a new line in there just so everything stays nice and neat. And I'm going to copy this guy here, paste that inside of there. I could also check if this list is empty. So I'm going to put a not symbol inside of there. And then I'm going to change this to is empty. Of course, there's nothing to put inside of there. And then here is actually where I'm going to check if it is int empty. That's why I put the little not symbol in there. Because otherwise, nothing would be printed out. I'm going to copy this string, make my life a little bit easier. And then to this string, I'm also going to do a couple other different things. So let's say that we want to print out the screen the elements in the list meaning the number of elements in the list. In this situation, I'm going to go def list model size and then throw my little new line inside of there and paste this in there. I could also find the last element. And I just type in last element. Pretty simple and pretty easy to remember. But of course, make sure this is a capital E and not a lowercase e. I could also find the first element just by typing in first element. And as you play around with Java, you're going to find that a lot of this stuff just starts getting ingrained in your head and you just simply remember it just by using Using it a bunch of times. Could also find out whatever element is in a specific index, in um, index one, for example. 
And in this situation, you're just going to type get and then whatever index you want to look for. And then of course, you could also come in here and go diff list model and say that you want to remove an item based off of whatever index it's in. Real simple to do. Can't do this with a regular list component. And of course, you could also come in here and remove an element based off of its name. So in this situation, let's say I want to get rid of big, just that easy. And everything's going to automatically update. And let's say that you wanted to also create an array that is filled with all those different list elements. You could also do that. So let's go array of list is the name I'm going to give it. And then you just go def list model and say to array. It's a very useful method. And then if you want to cycle through all these different guys, we're just going to say object color array of list. Just going to put in the name that you created for this guy right there. And then we're going to cycle through all these different guys and put them in the info string that we have up above. Just type in color and then just to keep everything nice and neat, throw in a new line. And then if we execute this guy, as long as I coded everything right, you can see all of that information prints out the screen. So go ahead, get all the code, play around with this guy and get yourself acquainted with the list component. It's a really, really useful tool. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.